Alright, so as I'm sure most of you guys know by this point, Crisis on Earth 1, the Arrowverse fan game being developed by a team led by Tekosaurus, was shut down after Warner Brothers apparently sent Teko a cease and desist letter just days after he announced the game's release date. Just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, long story short is that basically this dude Tekosaurus started putting together his own Arrowverse themed video game that eventually morphed into an adaptation of the Crisis on Earth X crossover from last year. It would have featured a huge cast of playable characters, unlockable costumes, hidden items, secret locations, the works. I've done a bunch of videos about the game before, you can search around on my channel and find some of those if you want, or you can check out the update videos over on Teko's channel through the link in the comments and in the description. Either way, now that you're all caught up, I think we can all agree that this whole cease and desist thing is a load of fucking bullshit. God fucking damn it! Seriously, this game looked fucking awesome towards the end there. I mean, have you guys honestly thought about how cool it would have been to play through a boss fight with the reverse flash in flash time? Seriously, it sucks that there's nothing we can do to change it. I mean, companies issue takedowns on stuff all the time. Like, some of you guys might just hear the word Nintendo and automatically associate it with the word lawsuit, like some kind of depressing Rorschach test. Seriously though, all fan-made creations run the risk of some kind of legal action from the company or companies whose work they're being based on, so in all fairness, it really was only a matter of time that Teko would get hit with a cease and assist at the least. And you're lucky to get that. Unfortunately for him and Warner Brothers though, a lot of the game's fans really haven't been as understanding, with a large number of them reacting in a variety of ways. One of the more common reactions I've seen so far is a lot of people claiming that Teko could fight the cease and desist in court, or just release the game anyway because reasons, since he isn't making any money off the game or because of fair use in general. Unfortunately, that's not the way this works. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Now I'm definitely not a lawyer, but I do have some experience with identifying fair use and properly using it on my channel, since I've been hit with a bunch of different copyright claims on a few of my videos and won a bunch of them. Although most of the ones I didn't win were still clearly fair use, let's be honest. Typically speaking, we can guesstimate whether or not something falls under fair use based on a few different factors. Unfortunately, once you start going over the list, you'll realize that Teko's game violates every single one of these factors. For example, somebody releasing a free, full-length game based on a DC property could result in a negative effect on the video game market for Warner Brothers if they ever decided to go in the same direction at some point. I mean, think about it from their perspective. Let's say they eventually want to move past just putting the Arrowverse versions of their characters in a bunch of mobile games and instead work on a full-fledged game. But guess what? Now nobody cares because you got some random dude in Australia strolling in, handing out copies of an Arrowverse game he made with a bunch of other people, and they're giving it away for free. You know how much money Warner Brothers could potentially lose if Teko got to release his game? I mean, I personally still feel like they'd turn a pretty penny. I know I'd have bought a copy of their game if they ever made one and it looked good, but the fact is, there were going to be people who wouldn't pay for an official game since they'd already have a totally free one to play around with. Then there's how much of the work Teko copied for the game. Technically, you're more likely to get away with copying if you only do it a little bit, but but in Teko's case, these voice actors really were able to imitate the characters I have cast them for and they'll be able to do great things for us. I mean, the entire game is literally a copy of the entire crossover. I'm assuming the game doesn't change the ending of the crossover at all, or add any new events, or dialogue, or characters, or anything like that in between the moments we already saw on screen. Speaking of, let's talk about the transformative factor for a little bit. Usually, if you manage to add anything new to the original work, you'd be okay with copying a little bit here and there. That's why usually I've been fine on some of my videos, because even though I'm using clips from different shows and movies, I'm giving them a new meaning and the audience new insight that allows them to better understand some of the on-screen feats the characters in these things do. I guess you could technically argue that Teko's game is transformative, since it takes what was simply a viewable experience and adds a new layer to it by allowing people to play through it all, essentially giving players a new perspective on the crossover, but come on, that's a pretty lame excuse. Seriously though, like I mentioned earlier, this game is still essentially a copy of something created by Warner Brothers. Honestly, I'm just surprised it lasted this long. Regardless, it is still pretty upsetting that Teko and his team put so much time and effort into making what would have been an amazing game, only to have the whole thing get shut down in one quick swoop. It sucks. Now I know some of you guys are probably still upset about the cancellation, but let's not do anything drastic. Like I've seen a bunch of people in the game's discord talking about emailing Warner Brothers and directly asking them about the letter Teko received. On the one hand, I personally have no problem with this. I don't think there's any harm in wanting to make sure the letter Teko got isn't just a troll trying to shut the game down or whatever. But on the other hand though, I'd highly recommend everybody stop trying to contact Warner Brothers, if anybody's even still trying to email them. One person, or even a handful of people, trying to email the same people at Warner Brothers isn't that big of a deal. I mean, that's why companies hire PR people, like part of their job is to answer questions from the general public and the press. 
But any more than that, and maybe an overzealous Warner Brothers lawyer could decide to move forward with a lawsuit on anybody running the game's Discord, citing targeted harassment. I mean, you never know, it could happen. But anyways guys, that's my take on the cancellation of Crisis on Earth 1. If you guys agreed with anything I said in this video, or if you have your own thoughts you want to throw out there, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.